Nam mô Bổn Sư Thích Ca Mô Ni Phật. Today is Sunday, July 26, 2020. It is 12:37 p.m. Washington State Time, and I am Dharma Master Tik Tom Lai. I would like to send my warmest greetings to all compatriots who are living abroad and in Vietnam. And to people who are attending my live stream sessions to continue listening to the preaching of the Diamond Sutra. As usual, I will answer some questions about the Diamond Sutra from Buddhist followers who listens to the Diamond Sutra. Once I have done answering these questions, I will preach the passage from the Diamond Sutra where Elder Sibutu asked the Buddha, about the four levels of holy sage which are sarata pana sakra dagmin anagamin and arhat until today in all the sutras the buddha advised us to cultivate and obtain at least the first level which is sarta pana in the time of the buddha was still alive his disciples listened to a few sermons and obtained the first level also known as entering the holy sage or entering the first holy language the buddha asked elder subutu if there were obtaining the four levels of arhat or not I will read the text in this passage, and then I will answer the question and will preach about this passage. Saputu, what do you think? Does a disciple who has obtained Sartapana stay within himself? Was I obtained the first level of Harhat? Saputu said, No, Buddha. Mm, why? Because a Sartapana who entered the holy lineage, but there is no lineage entering. The, bis- the disciple who pays no regards to form, sound, odor, taste, touch, or any quality is called a holy lineage entering. Saputu, what do you think? Does a sacred daga mean? who is subject to only one more rebirth, stays within himself? When I obtained the second level of Arhat, Elder Sibutu said, No, Buddha. Why? Because a sacrament dagman is merely a name. There is no passing away, nor coming into existence. Therefore, a Sakme dogman is called once to be reborn. Subutu, what do you think? Does an Agamemnon who will never more be reborn as a mortal stay within himself? Was I obtain the third level of an Arat, which is non-returner? Subutu said, no, Buddha. Why? Because Agnaman is merely a name. There is no non-returning. Hence, the destination, non-returner. Subutu, what do you think? Does an Arhat say within himself? 
Have I obtained perfective enlightenment? Subhutu said, "No, Buddha. Why? Because there is no such condition as that called perfective enlightenment." Buddha, if an arhat or perfective enlightenment said to himself, "Such am I." He would necessarily pretake of the idea of an ego entity, a personality, a being, or a separate individual. Buddha, when you declare that I excel among holy men in the Shangha, I do not say within myself. I am a holy one of protective enlightenment. Therefore, the Buddha called Zebutu. Obtain our head class. These are the confusing passages. The first level of Sertapa Pana. Second level is Sakrana Dogmen. Third level is Anagmen. And then the last level is our head. In other sutras, the Buddha encourages us to obtain at least the first level. That is. Start upon a level. Once obtained at this level, the cultivator will reincarnate as human for seven times before entering nirvana. The sakman dogman will reincarnate as human for one more time, while the agman won't have to reincarnate at all. Arhat is the end of samra. However, in the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha said there is no Sartapina, Sakra Dogmen, Agnamen, and Arhat. In a little while, I will elaborate in this passage passage of the Diamond Sutra the reason the Buddha dismantled all the classes, while in the other sutras, the Buddha Sakmuni praised any layman who obtained any of the four levels. The wealthy merchant Sudutta obtained Satrapana. He also hired his son to cultivate for him by holding the eight precepts for a day, and his son also obtained Satrapana. In the end, his son no longer wanted money. However, in the Diamond Sutra, all holy levels are dissolved. In a little while, I will explain. And now I will read a letter from a female Buddhist follower who has a husband. After listening to my preaching of the Diamond Sutra, he told his wife that from now on he should not give alms to receive blessing. This Buddhist follower said in the past her husband attended sermons of other Dharma masters and used money to give alms to receive a lot of blessing. However, when he listened to my preaching of the Diamond Sutra, he wanted to focus on cultivating, to open up the true wisdom, and no longer gives alms. In her opinion, something is not quite right, but she did not have enough Buddhist knowledge to debate with her husband. So she therefore asked me to solve this dilemma. Because he said, according to my Diamond Sutra preaching, doing merit is not right way to cultivate. Because of his misunderstanding about the Diamond Sutra, I will have to explain the merit of giving alms. As we study the Diamond Sutra to open our knowledge and wisdom, I only say that the Buddha always praised giving alms and cultivating the mind. We have to cultivate the mid Dharma. Blessing can only help us to be rich and beautiful. Unfortunately, being wealthy but not escaping samsara cannot rid the delusional mind, cannot retain the true mind, and without recognizing Buddhist nature, we will always cycle in samsara. But if we cultivate the wisdom only without giving alms, even If we have obtained the arhat level, we will suffer like the unfortunate bhikkhu, who will never had a full meal in his whole life. To have a full meal before he obtained arhat level, 
he must use the blessings from the Buddha. So I have to explain this misconception clearly to the male Buddhist follower who said no need to practice merit because the Buddha dismantled all the holy sage classes, even the arhat level. The Buddha only talked about the Buddha's nature and not about giving alms. It is very pitiful to practice merit without cultivating the mind to recognize Buddha's nature or cultivate the mind without giving alms. They both were not Buddhist concept. Let me read this letter and I will explain clearly that I do not have a policy of not giving alms. I preach Dharma according to the spirit of the Diamond Sutra. Giving alms will be rich, beautiful, and reborn in heaven. Those are implement because once all the blessings are depleted, these people will still fall back to the six paths of birth and death. Only people who rid the delusional mind and retain the true mind anywhere is the blissful land world and everywhere is the ashram. Anything these people will do benefits sentient beings. According to the sixth patriarch Yunang and the spirit of the Diamond Sutra, these people recognize their Buddhist nature. I now invite you to listen to this email. Dear Varnable Tiktum Lai, for the past month, my husband and I have been very passionate about listening to the preaching of the Diamond Sutra. The reason I send you this letter is because my husband told me since yesterday after listening continuously to the Diamond Sutra preaching given by Dharma Master Thich Tom Lai, you and I have cultivated by giving alms and we were completely wrong. Since today I vow not to give alms or offering and I must cultivate to rid the delusion of mind and abide to the true mind. So from now on you should not ask me to go to charity to give alms and to free trap animals because I see almsgiving only receive blessing and still cycle in samsara. It is the curse in the third life. I heard the preaching of the Diamond Sutra and I no longer enjoy giving alms because it does not benefit us at all. But it is a disaster for the third life. That is my final decision, and I want to let you know that. That was from my husband's words given to me last Sunday, and it made me terrified. In my opinion, his logic did not make any sense, and I feel it opposes the spirit of the Diamond Sutra. It is clearly that he has not rid his delusional mind and he had not obtained his true mind. He insisted that giving alms is the wrong way to cultivate. I also don't think your undertaking is persuading Buddhist followers not to give alms. Once you receive this email, please take a moment to clear my husband's misconception about the merit of giving alms. I truly appreciate your, your merit and wish you health in this pandemic. Signed by a Buddhist follower who has, who has a husband that relies on the Diamond Sutra to stop giving alms and doing charity. Do you remember that the Buddha did not praise giving alms without cultivating the wisdom only? However, if we cultivate the wisdom without giving alms, we will be miserable on the journey from ordinary layman to becoming a Buddha. Most of you already know the historical story of the unfortunate monk. Back to cultivating wisdom and giving alms, what is the benefit of this mid-dharma? Let me talk 
to you more about the first level in, of enlightenment, which is saratapana, or entering holy language. So they will become our head after cycling as humans for seven times. Saratapana is the lowest level of the four holy sage classes. As you will be reborn as a human, you will be born in a nation of freedom, democracy with human right, rights. You will be born in a family that your parents have morals and virtues, and your parents understand the Dharma. That is the blessing for cultivating with both giving alms and opening wisdom. Please remember, if you cultivate by opening the wisdom only, you then won't have the blessings to protect you. People who cultivate by giving alms only at the last minute of their life, because of whatever reason, they will become angry and will be reborn as animals. As you can see, some of the dogs in the United States were raised by wealthy owners. Some of these dogs inherit millions of dollars, having servants to take care of them, even though they have no wisdom. I used to work as, a, as an electrician to fix air conditioners. I went to some of the American homes that, that are worth millions of dollars in which dogs were just dressed in jeans, beautiful clothes, and even had servants. These wealthy owners even brought Mercedes cars to drive their dogs. And these dogs were sent to doctors for periodical examination. After they die, these dogs will also have a funeral ceremony, have people carry them to cemeteries in their own coffins. As you know, because of cultivating by giving alms, if we were born as animals, we will be born in countries where they don't kill animals. Do you see the birds of the United States, Europe, and Australia? In these countries, people don't hunt them with slings due to the blessing of giving alms in their previous lives. But if we were unlucky and born in Vietnam, the animals in Vietnam are very miserable. In human race, wars happen because of enemies killing each other. However, in some countries, they don't know much about Buddhism, like Vietnam and China. Every time they see an animal, they start to think of a way to kill that animal. From a pregnant woman to a child, from an adulterer to a drinker. When seeing the birds, they will look for something to kill the bird and eat them. A pregnant woman would throw a rock at the bird that lands on her fence. A child would use a slingshot to kill the bird. A dog in Vietnam, stray or not, they will be shocked by teasers and sold in slaughterhouses. You can clearly See if you are blessed, even though you are born as animals, we are still born in a country that is protected for us from being slaughtered by the law of that country. When I preach the Diamond Sutra, I explain the, the supreme enlightenment as the Buddha disregarded all the conser conservative views and principles. As this Buddhist follow listens to the Diamond Sutra, it is not clear if he has successfully rid his delusional mind or not. But he is like a bird with one wing. As you know, a bird needs two wings. One is blessing and one is wisdom. Only that his cultivation cannot be balanced to reach the freedom of samsara. I will analyze the blessing more clearly. In this world, people who practice giving alms, they are very rich. Two people who do the same industry, let's say hmm, computer engineering, they both apply together to a company called Microsoft. The human resource staff automatically views the profile of the blessed person and liked it. 
the blessed person gets hired and is paid a very good salary. The person who is not blessed meets an unhappy interviewer because of this person's conflict with his spouse. The unhappy interviewer rejects all of the applicants. So, on the degree, the person who cultivates the wisdom will graduate with a higher GPA, pass the exams with a higher score, but still earns less than the one who graduated with an average GPA because this person gave alms in his previous life more than the cultivating for the wisdom. Because of giving alms in the previous life, so in this life. He has a better life, an easier job, and works for a company where his boss is a good person and helps him all the time. You see, there are many people who have many degrees and are very good at what they do, but in the end, they still have a bad life. They don't even have enough money to buy a good car, and still live in rental homes, even though they wrote famous books and. Are authors of many stories. Sometimes their work have no values when they are alive. For example, they drew pictures while they are alive, and the paintings are not worth hundreds of dollars. However, after they die, another artist uses the same painting as an inspirational theme, and they redraw it and earn a few million dollars. So once again, I advise the male Buddhist followers to practice giving alms and cultivating wisdom. I do not have a policy of eliminating of giving alms. Remember that our property is blessing and wisdom. There are Buddhist monks who were from the same Dharma language with the same Dharma master, but the monk who only cultivates wisdom in the previous life. In this life, can translate and preach the sutra, but no Buddhist followers listens and like his work. As you can see, some masters organize the Dharma assembly. They work so hard to receive very little money. Sometimes they actually lose instead of gaining because they do not practice giving alms in their previous life. There are monks. That establish the new Dharma language, who had the same Dharma master, whether Zen sect, Pure Land sect, or Tantric sect. Some of these monks do not have enough support to give, to cover for utility bills, and are full of debts because in their previous lives they did not practice giving alms, but only focus on cultivating wisdom. However, if we only practice on giving alms, then we will not be able to rid our delusional mind and be able to obtain our true mind. The journey from an ordinary person to the Buddha level is very difficult without practicing giving alms, because the lack of necessity, lack of means to establish a pagoda or an ashram. So a wise person must cultivate both on giving alms and cultivating wisdom. From, for another example, there are singers who sing very well, and they cannot meet someone to promote them. To promote them, so they have to perform on the streets. Once in a while, when I go to the airport, I see an American pianist performing in the airport. They play the piano beautifully. I asked them about their reimbursement because they play so well. They told me the owner of the airport pays them five hundred dollars a day to pay for standby travelers. Some of the artists practices both giving alms and wisdom in previous lives. They perform a song and make tens of millions of dollars in the U.S. So I am not a person who laments on giving alms, but I promote to practice both giving alms and wisdom. Blessing and wisdoms are our assets.
They are the foundation stones of Tipitaka. A Buddhist monk who only cultivates wisdom, and he was enlightened, already understood the Diamond Sutra, understood Tipitaka Dharma, and other sutras as well. He then withdrew into the forest, did not interact with other sentient beings, and did not accept disciples. This person was my sister, a Buddhist nun, New Tui. During her entire life, she did not accept a single monastic, monastic disciple. Although my sister gave so many Dharma talks before 1975, and after 1975, she sat on a podium of Trungju Monastery to preach Dharma to other Buddhist monks, which was taboo, a taboo in Buddhists because women were not allowed to teach monks who were at the vulnerable and great vulnerable levels. My sister could give Dharma talks to the monks but refused to have monastic disciples. She said it was very difficult to accept a monastic disciple. She only accepted lay people as disciples. Her vast knowledge about Buddhism Dharma ended as she entered Samara. Her Dharma language ended. She did not share the Dharma light to the next generation. I want to talk about a Dharma master in Oklahoma. You probably know him. He is the abbot of the famous of the first famous Oklahoma temple. This temple was cradled for many Buddhist followers in other temples in Oklahoma state. This monk is also a Southern Republic of Vietnam. He came to America for decades and worked so hard to build his temple out of sweat and tears. However, he did not accept any monastic disciples. He is still alive, but he is already in his 80s and he is very weak. You can see that the temple will also go into Samsara because there is no one to maintain the Dharma language. That is the matter of spirituality. As you can see, there are doctors who graduated from the same institute, but one graduated with honors could make less money than one graduated with an average GPA. Because of the blessing from previous life, he works for the hospital. He has better benefits, and the hospital boards welcomes him. If he takes refuge in Buddhism, he will make more. He will have more convenience and means of establishment. His language. He won't be in debt during his journey of preachhood, preaching the Tripitaka. The woman who practiced giving alms in previous life, they reincarnate and marry handsome husbands. Their husband loves them clearly. And, they're not, they, and they are not even beautiful at all. That was because of their blessing from previous lives. And on the contrary, some women who are beautiful, elegant, skillful, and faithful, but they marry to a wife beater. Their husbands are so ugly and don't even love them. My examples are not 100% accurate, but there are things like that that happen in this world because of the blessing from our previous lives. I tell you that all are due to blessing. As a nail salon owner, you train with newly graduate technician. These technicians did not know how to do acrylic, silk, manicures, pedicures. You train them from beginning and they just left you to open up their own nail salon. Their hand skills are not as good as yours. Their English are not as fluent. And their experience is very little. But they have more customers. What did they do and you haven't done? It was the blessing. You have little blessing than your technician. 
There are rich people who do not have any degree because they gave so much alms in previous life. They have no degree in work without qualification, but they still make billions of dollars. On the contrary, there are people who are very intelligent and have plenty qualifications, but they are very poor. And that is because of the lack of blessing due to only, only cultivating wisdom. So I advise the male Buddhist follower who listens to my preaching of the Diamond Sutra and have ideas of stop giving alms. In fact, there is no sutra saying recognizing Buddhist nature is due to alms giving. There is no sutra saying that using money to build temples and print sutras to recognize Buddhist nature. It was a misconception. Many people heard that publishing a set of Lotus Sutra is blessing. So they print and they distribute the sutras to many pagodas and temples. Those sutras were stored in a locker and there are no merits. And no merits were earned. Some people heard printing the um, Amatetaba Buddha scriptures would earn blessing. Then they publish so many and the scriptures are flooded everywhere. They say people print Earth Sword Sutra is blessed and they print and give to many temples. From the mid 1970s to the 80s and Earth Sword Sutras were very precious. A Buddhist statue in the United States was very precious because at that time it was very rare. Nowadays people could complain because Buddhist followers offer too many sutras. They have several thousand copies of Amatepa Buddha's sutras, earth store sutras, and lotus stored sutras, but there are not people to recite and preach them. You can see clearly that the sutra is only valuable if it is news for reciting. Last summer during the earth stored assembly, why did I force my disciples to rewrite the earth stored scriptures? Because I know rewriting sutras has merits. In fact, when you rewrite the sutra, you have to use the three karmas. The body, which is your hand to write. The mouth is used to read the sutra. Then the mind is used to rewrite the sutra. So you had used all the three karmas to rewrite the sutra. For some people, it took a whole month. Some people finished it in two months. Some people, three months. And some even took six months. Once done, they brought it to me to inspect and sign. The blessing is not from decorating the suture beautifully, but from the dedication of rewriting. People who listen to my advice and rewrote the sutra, once they done, they understood the meaning of the earth stored sutra more than reciting it. Once you understood the sutra and imprinted in your mind, your wisdom and blessings are like the vast ocean. That is the merit of rewriting the sutra. In the old days, there were no printers. Some people wanted to copy the Lotus Sutra to give the merit for their past relatives. They hired someone to rewrite the sutra and their relatives appeared in their dreams to inform because of their hired, their sons hired people to copy the sutra. The mother got more intense punishment. The son was lazy and hired someone to write. He basically robbed the work of the others. That is called copied sutra, not rewrote sutra. Please do not print sutras in bulk without understanding the merit, understanding the right meaning in the earth stored sutra. The righteous meaning in the earth stored sutra is the filial. If you recite and rewrite the earth stored sutra but leave your parents hungry or in a nursing home, you can copy the sutra a thousand times and you still did not understand the preaching of the Buddha. 
The Buddha preached the Earth Sword Sutra to teach us to repay to our parents filial petty. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you heard that giving back to the Buddha Sakmuni statue is blessed. You raised to give back for the Buddha statue. From small temples to big temples, every Buddha bathing ceremony was lined up with a very long line. The Buddha statue stood in the lotus tub filled with aromatic oils. Then the great Varnamal gave the first bath. Then the Varnamal, and then lay people. But giving bath like that is not. As good as staying at home on Buddha's birthday and giving bath to your own parents.